We all make mistakes with watercolour and in this video I highlight some common mistakes like overworking a watercolour, getting too muddy, muddy with your colours uh, and basically just not knowing when to finish a painting. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter and I produce full length video tutorials with commentary which will hopefully help you improve your watercolour techniques and create some great looking watercolour paintings. So as I said, this will be a two painting video. The first one will eventually be a dud and the second one, I hopefully, uh, I'll do better. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you be the judge. And I wanted to really do this video to explain these mistakes because especially for beginners, and I do review lots of paintings from, paint, from painters of all different levels. Uh, up on my Patreon site, I've got a little monthly um, painting project going and we've got hundreds of uh, painters up there. And I, I sometimes see, well, I, I quite commonly see with, with beginners, they do commit these pretty common mistakes that I'll be alluding to and doing myself in the first painting. Anyway, so this is the scene and it's the port of Alexandria in Egypt. Uh, this is the Ibn Khardum Mosque, I think it is, um, right by the entrance to the port. The port entrance is over to the right here. And um, it's, it's a sort of, it's a sunny scene, but what I wanted to try and capture was the, the, the warmth, the heat of the day, and a little bit of the dust and grime. As you can see, uh, the road is being repaired here or resurfaced. Um, when I was there, this is one of my photographs. And with all these cars, it's churning up all the dust. And I wanted to try and create that sort of atmosphere. Yet, I've still got some, or we've still got some light coming in. So, for example, there's a lovely little bit of light hitting the, the corner of the, the, the mosque there, just below the dome. Um, we've got these lovely minarets as well, imposing minarets, a little bit of light hitting those as well. Light hitting the tops of the cars also. Uh, a, a, nice, um, a nice few lines leading us into the scene on the road surface. A little bit of rubble there in the middle quite dark on the left hand side. I'm obviously looking in watercolour, I'm obviously looking for a scene of, of, of contrasts and light values and dark values. So we've got a little bit of a, a contrast there between the light and, and the dark. So let's see how we get on. Um, as I say, first painting will be a little bit of a dud um, and it will start to become apparent towards the end of it. And I will explain exactly what I'm doing wrong or what I think I'm doing wrong, just so that you hopefully don't make those same mistakes. Now with both these paintings, I will pretty much follow the same procedure. Um, I do an outline drawing, first of all, of the, uh, the main shapes in the composition. Uh, by the way, if you do want to keep seeing my reference photo um, as I paint the demo, then it's best to open up the video in another tab uh, on your browser um, and just then hold the video at, at the beginning where I showed you the, the, uh, the Alexandria scene and then you can just then out tab um, or just keep going back to back to that as a reference. Uh, fine if I do impose it on the screen here, you, you're going to lose some element. You're going to lose part of the palette or um, part of. Oh, I want to try and maximise the um, the viewing space, um, the viewing area of my painting. So I've got in the outline of the buildings. And then I'm coming down to the cars, very simple shapes. They're coming towards us. So they're, they're simpler to, to draw and paint a, a car coming towards us. 
uh, maybe this one at a slight angle, wheels, trying to get the proportions right with the windscreen and the body of the car, uh, just an indication of the shadow. Now we've got lots of cars in this scene, um, like a little mini rush hour, a lot of, lot of cars going into the distance and we can see the tops of them receding into the middle ground. Uh, so I, I want to, I'm, I'm pretty much copying uh, the photograph with the, the, the different sort of yellow taxes that are there. Um, these yellow Alexandrian taxes and a few, well, a minibus here, or a, a, certainly a taller, taller vehicle. Another car over to the right hand side. So trying to get a good balance of cars in, in the composition. And this drawing, this drawing stage has to be right before I start painting. It can be difficult, certainly for me, to try and change my mind um, through the painting and trying to change where major objects are and uh, like cars and, and houses and so on, buildings. Now, I've got, we've got some figures in the scene. I'll have them over on the left hand side. Just a few there. And as I mentioned in the opening, the strong uh, lines across the road surface leading us into the composition. Which I'll, I'll try and keep keep to those lines when I do the when I do the painting. Then this building on the left hand side just getting in some lines to help me with the perspective. It's over on the left hand side. It's going to be in the shade, so there won't be, I won't need to uh, put in too much detail there. However, the, the mosque I do want to get right with this little triangle of light I mentioned at the beginning as well. Quite like that in sunny scenes, just seeing a little shard of light in amongst dark objects. It, um, I, I think, it looks quite nice from a from a composition point of view. So that's the initial drawing done, and now step two: getting in the first wash. Uh, if I could explain my palette, which will be the same for both paintings, and it's the standard, it's the standard colours I've always used for uh, a long, long time. Um, the only thing I've changed maybe is, are the brushes I use uh, with those very same colours. So uh, from the top, on, on the right hand side, from the top, I've got neutral tint, burnt umber, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, which I'm applying here over the horizon. Uh, just covering the buildings. And now uh, above that, a little bit of Cobalt Blue. A little bit more intense on the right hand side because the sun is coming from the left. Now I'm actually applying it a little bit thicker there at the top, so it's not going to cause any blooms or cauliflowers. And there's a slight slope with my painting surface, uh, ever so slight, maybe about 10 degrees. So the paint's gonna travel down a little bit. That blue's gonna travel down into the yellow ochre and give us a little bit of a soft edge. Now, continuing over to the left-hand side, I really can apply any color here. I just want to cover the white paper. And essentially, I would be really just mixing and maybe a weaker color of what that, what that object is going to be. So 
So a little bit further down, coming down to the tops of the cars. Now, if, if I wanted to have some really bright light hitting, hitting the tops of the cars, which on this first painting, I'm going for this, um, this sort of very hazy look uh, with lots of dust being churned up. Uh, I could have left some little, little horizontal slithers of light on the tops of the cars um, as opposed to maybe using white paint at the end. So continuing on down now onto the road surface and I don't need to be too precise with this because the road surface is it's been dug up, it's being repaired so there's a lot of uh, rough texture to it and the more I use brush strokes in different directions and also paint of different ratios of water to pigment, I'm going to get some variations occurring and uh, the, the watercolour will just um, mix in with each other quite nicely. Now, here I'm putting in the yellow of these taxes, these bright yellow Alexandrian taxes, and letting that bleed into the surrounding area. The first wash was done with a as big a mop brush as I can 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 have. It's a, a Raphael soft aqua brush. Now here for these lines going up the street I've got a small synthetic round brush that's been dampened with clear water and the foreground is still damp, um, it's still a little bit moist and this using this damp brush it just sort of parts the pigment so I get a lighter line and a few little dark, some soft dark edges to it, which I think does a pretty good job at creating these lines that you see on the street where car, car tracks have gone through. Now I've just quickly dried my painting and then I can go on to the third stage now, which is applying the the darks, which is going to give the painting a bit more depth and we're, we're creating these values at the moment. It's all pretty light. We've now got to go in with, with darker values, not so dark, not so dark in with the background buildings, but darker coming towards us and sharper edges. And I'm going to start with the dome, first of all. Pretty tricky things to paint and get symmetrical. You've got to that's why it's important to make sure the initial drawing is correct because certainly with, with domes or circular objects, you've got to get that drawing absolutely right. Also with watercolour, if you're a beginner, a little tip, you will need to go a little bit darker with your colours uh, than you think because the paint's going to dry a lot lighter. So with these minarets, now I could go for a really detailed approach with these minarets, but I paint in a loose way. So I'm not too bothered about um, having perfect edges. Maybe we've got well, certainly with minarets, you've got lots of lots of lovely architectural details to them, but they're they're sort of in the distance, so I don't want to get too um, detailed with that. So that's <laughs> I've just done the first first mistake, and that's I've gone over my lovely little um, 
triangle of light and try to sort of introduce another one up there. But that's the first mistake, is, is not really sticking to um, your, your drawing and perhaps working too quickly, not thinking properly. Um, it's easily done. And uh, yeah, you've got to follow the drawing. If, the, well, if you're happy with the drawing, follow the drawing. Now, minaret number two, starting darker at the top, so quite a cool dark colour then coming down with the yellow ochre. The brush I'm using here is a, a Jackson's. Um, this is a, a Jackson's uh, squirrel or pure, pure squirrel mop uh, they're called. So it's natural hair whereas the first brush I had was a synthetic squirrel. And the synthetic squirrel it does it it's um there's no natural hairs in it obviously because it's called called synthetic um, they are pretty soft but they're not as soft i don't think they'll ever get as soft as a pure squirrel brush um, and i find with with better quality squirrel mops then you get a nice um hard edge with them you get you get a brush with a good um edge to it and a good point to it. I'm just making sure these minarets are dry before I go on to the next stage. So the next step will be the background buildings. Let me just continue on the, the palette. So we had neutral tint the top, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue in the middle, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue there. I just use a bit of ultramarine blue. Aloes and crimson, a Windsor red, then a light red, cadmium orange, and a lemon yellow. Right down the bottom as well, I've got a lavender which is quite a nice opaque colour to use for. Certainly for background buildings would work quite well with a little bit of burnt sienna. So quite a loose way of painting in these background buildings and I'm going I need to be a bit careful now going over to the minaret and getting the building painting up close to the edges of the minaret and certainly on that left hand side because the light's coming from the left I don't need to necessarily go right up to the edge of the minaret, I can uh, just leave a little thin, uh, little bit of paper showing through there. Right, continue on over the other side. And we'll come down to the dome. Now, a little bit of careful painting around the dome now, around that lighter, uh, the lighter, the top, the top left um, part of the dome. So immediately you see there, it's going quite bright. And I painted over that little slither of uh, light that I want, so wanted to um, retain in the painting, but never mind. Um, but you'll see another, later on you'll see another big mistake, me trying to reintroduce that bit of light into the, into the left-hand side below the dome quite dark uh, actually um, second minaret just behind the the base of the minaret want to keep the edge uh, quite 
moist here. Uh, I'm working in fairly dry conditions right now and uh, the paint's drying fairly quickly, but I don't want to, I want to, to, to be able to keep work, keep working on the watercolor. So I don't want things to necessarily dry out too quickly. So continue on over over to the right hand third and there's a quite a dominant tall building on the right hand side. I'll do give a little bit of a, a jagged edge where there could be some balconies protruding out from the side just sort of silhouetted against the brighter sky. So I'm coming down a little bit darker towards the tops of the cars and using the brush in a sort of sideways motion like that, I can give myself a few little light um, areas that could be the tops of some cars. Now, there's a building on the right-hand side, not too detailed, very, very, simple the main the main focus has to be really from where i'm painting now over to the right hand over right in the sort of middle area where, where i'm painting now that's got that's the main main focal part of the of the painting I do use my fingertips quite a bit just to, while the paint is still moist, I can be moving it around. So you can do this with good quality watercolor paper. I'm using Saunders Waterford watercolor paper and uh, yeah, good, good quality watercolor paper will take a fair amount of abuse and um, prodding and scraping and lifting off. So here we are, these horizontal strokes, exposing a few little light areas. And again, over the right hand side, something very simple, just to have the, the, uh, the building just come down to the street level and then we've got the lighter the lighter area of the street. Now, back to the left-hand side. And this building, I'm having it quite dark at the top. Then maybe a little bit lighter as we come into the middle area. So I'm using a weaker, a weaker wash, more water. I'm following those lines. I cr created um, four lines or so for the different levels of the building and, and helping, me, helping me with the perspective. So just re a really, like the right hand side, but a, it's a bigger area, just quite loose. Now I'm gonna get a little bit darker and thicker paint towards the bottom. And this will dry a little bit lighter So you can see these dry brush marks, which I think will be quite effective to give the appearance of, of a softer edge and going over this, this rough road surface. Now I've connected the shadow of the building to this first taxi and the tops of the taxis are yellow but the bottoms are more of a black color shiny black
This is important to join up all these shapes and like that right hand car, the dark area, just connecting with the shadow of the buildings on the right hand side. I think that's that works quite well with watercolour, just letting them blend in with each other. Different colours of cars. Really, they're, they're just quite simple little horizontal marks that will hopefully give the impression of cars receding into the distance. Now, this mini bus um, here has got the dark rear on the back, a little bit of light hitting the right hand side, down to the bottom of the van. And then we'll go in with some dark shadows now. Just have a little bit of light showing through um, underneath the car, um, the left hand wheel and a little bit of light shining through. Continue on, middle car. Again, a slither of light underneath the car. And then the van. A little bit of a a longer shadow because it's a higher vehicle and then this right hand taxi. So it's starting to give the painting a bit more depth now. By adding in those darks, so just moving a few things around with my with my brush. my fingertips. There are just a few little dark marks in the foreground to indicate little bits of rubble on the ground. This is why it's quite good to have a brush with a a good point and a good edge and makes it easier for what I'm doing now, creating a few little windscreens of the distant cars. Doesn't matter if it, uh, again, again, I'm just joining up different elements of the composition and it doesn't matter if they bleed in with each other. So as the background is now drying, I can start to go in with a bit more detail. That's pretty much uh, my stage three done. So drawing first stage, then the second stage is the wash, and then the third stage is going in with the darks just to give ourselves some depth. So small brush now, one of the smallest or the 
narrowest brushes I've got. Get in a bit of detail on the top of the minarets. Just a tiny bit. And then applying just a few lines to, to the buildings, just to indicate some of the architectural details and the lines and windows and so on. Now I'm using mainly a thing here. Not too much water on the brush. The buildings in the background, they don't need too much detail, otherwise the, the danger is it'll bring it it'll bring those objects too too far forwards. This brush is ideal for applying a little bit more texture to the ground, the, uh, the road surface. I'll just emphasize a few of those tarmac, tarmacs or, or lines, starting from within the shadows and going into the light. So there's hardly any water on this brush now. This is a dry brush mark, just dragging the brush up to the cars. Screens, another little car in the gap. So you see, we started with four four main vehicles in this one, and then the vehicles behind that. They're just really very simple shapes of lines or rectangular windscreens just to give the impression of those those distant vehicles right uh some lines on the minarets and the dome itself now i need to be careful not to make the paint too dark Otherwise, as I said just a little bit earlier, you, you, the danger is it, if, if I have too dark a colour in the background, it tends to bring it a bit further forward. So I want, I want it to be all nice, nice and soft. So it's a good idea that the background is, is ideally a little bit damp still. And then when I go in with this paint, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get soft edges, no hard edges appearing. few lines for wires and bits and pieces going up above the street. Again, another, another quite useful thing to include on a street scene are some power lines or something joining the left-hand side of the street to the right-hand side of the street. So it does actually look a little bit dusty at this stage in the distance, but as long as I don't put in too many hard edges or too much detail coming down towards street level. But I will, you'll, you'll see in this one, I make some horrendous mistakes and uh, which I'm ashamed of, but uh, I do want to share with you because just to highlight with watercolour, some things that are very difficult to get away with. And the, these mistakes are possibly some of, well, 
one of some of the major frustrations with watercolour that uh, may may make some people perhaps give up unfairly. Right back to the left hand side. Quite a dark, um, dark object. I think it's a tree or something uh, just at the base of the building, but it creates a nice bit of contrast with the, the lighter bottom of the building. So with, with this building, I'm just going to put in a few marks, dry brush marks, just here and there to indicate some windows, recess windows, columns, balconies, whatever, just, just so that it looks a little bit more realistic as a building. And these windows won't be complete rectangles, just a just a little bit of darker paint in maybe the corner or the top part of a window, but still, I'm still observing those uh, light, the lines of perspective. A few verticals as well. Darker windscreen for the van. Bit of trim on the cars and bumpers and whatnot. With some of these windscreens, you can leave some of them, particularly bearing in mind the lights coming from the left, you can, the cars that are over on the left hand side, you can imagine that with the angle of the light, the windscreens or the tops of the cars could be quite bright against a darker background. Whereas over on the right hand side, they could be a little bit darker. Continue on with a bit more rubble over on the left hand side. I'm not really copying exactly what was on the left hand side. I think there's a heap of um, hardcore or something like that. Now on the top of the dome, there's a little um, little uh, post or something. Um, bit more detail on the front of the mosque. Now what I'm doing here is possibly the start of where I'm going wrong. I wanted to have a scene that gave the impression of a very dusty hot day and a lot of that dust is just above the tops of the cars. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting in some darker marks and harder edges which is really covering up. I said a little while back that I thought I was beginning to get the impression of a dusty scene. Um, but what I'm doing now is really with these hard edges and darker values, it's detracting from that dust. It's all right, but it's not giving that, um, I'm losing that dusty feel in the middle ground.
if you are painting in a loose way, you've got to be mindful of not putting in too much detail, giving, just giving the impression of something. Uh, but I do want to get in a few bright lights here, these red, red lights on the backs of the taxis. Just had a little bit of a flake of bit of paint there. I need to get rid of get rid of that. Uh, right, some figures on the left hand side. Now they're in the shade, so let's have them fairly dark. These figures. Let's start with the head, and then the body. Now the legs. I don't need to be put too much detail in for legs because they're, they're obviously they're narrower objects but they're going to be lost in the shadows. Another figure. There are a group of figures, all different sizes, but keeping their heads the same level is very important with a group of figures. If we're if we're sort of on the level, we want to make sure the head, the tops of the heads are in line. Few more bits and pieces on that building while well, I've got this brush. So that was the uh, detail stage pretty much done and I really should have left it at this but I'm persisting with actually overworking the painting right now and this is the first mistake well I, I am sort of experimenting I'm trying to think well I've got this flat brush and I, I did a flat brush a flat brush painting recently and it's a very soft brush I thought well let's add in Let's think about it. Let's add in a very thin layer of white paint. This is white gouache um, in a random fashion with this with this flat brush over the uh, tops of the cars and maybe on the tops of the uh, on the actual cars themselves, and then try and rub a little bit out or with a, a drier brush here just blending it in. Now it could work, it would it would certainly need a lot of practice but the danger is that some of the, well I think probably one of the problems I've, I've got is that some of the paint isn't particularly dry so you can get you can get muddy watercolors appearing where you're, you're applying different layers of paint on top of each other, but you haven't let the paint dry below before adding in the top layer. So here I am continuing on and all that lovely light I had, well, particularly in the, I would say, over the cars, um, I'm almost getting away with it uh, above, uh, just above the cars, but then continuing on into the skyline. With, the, with this brush, 
it might be just a little bit too hard and my technique hasn't been perfected and I've brought that dirty uh, that dirtiness into the sky. Now I could I could have changed the the focus. I could have changed the emphasis of the the painting. It might have been um, a, maybe a sandstorm or something like that coming in. But I've totally obliterated a lot of the key objects I've done here. Like that that van has now almost disappeared, and uh, just totally overworked it. So I'm frantically thinking now, <laughs> shall I give up or keep going? Well, I am, I'm keeping going here and you'll see some continued mistakes. You might want to let this dry and just see if some of the objects just re-emerge. Um, unlikely to with uh, I possibly went in too much with that white paint. I think if I'd have been a little bit more economical with um, the white paint there, uh, I might have got away with it. So another another no-no now is going in with the, the dark paint again with a small brush and it will look a little bit overworked so I've applied this dustiness over everything I'm now having to really go over some of the key objects again um, picking up on the darkness around the minarets particularly the bases of the minarets and the left hand side of the dome there um, then the front of the mosque the three windows And I, th I think I'm sort of pulling it back now, but you'll see me in a minute make another mistake. There's this, <laughs> in this uh, painting, there's one mistake after another. Um, well, what, did I, what was the first mistake? The first mistake was losing that little triangle of light just below the dome. Um, and then applying too much detail above the cars. I'd, I'd got that sort of, semi-dusty feel about it but then um, lost it with too much dark paint I'm applying a bit too much dark paint again I'm losing some of those nice edges I had before uh, that you see a lot, a lot of watercolors like to be they look good when they're they're fresh and there's not too many layers on Watercolors, on the whole, watercolor is transparent. So you add these layers on top of each other. And as long as there's not too many layers, you get a, a freshness to it. But if you apply some opaque paint, um, different combinations can lead to a really sort of overworked, messy, messy look, which is what I gave myself. And I'm now frantically trying to, um, well, I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm just playing around. Not particularly important, but it's just you, you want to try these different things. And if it doesn't work, then learn from your mistakes. So there I am putting in some more lines of those buildings. I'm almost starting the painting again. This is what I was doing about half an hour ago. just on that left-hand side of that apartment building, if I didn't put those these lines in there, that could have given the appearance of a little bit of a, a sort of dusty cloud coming in from the left-hand side.
So because I've lost all the detail, I have to reapply these figures again. I went over those. I was a bit too erratic with that, with my flat brush. Get in at least a couple of figures there. Actually, it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. The middle between the two black figures is a little grayish figure, so that doesn't matter too much. That one could be wearing slightly lighter clothing. Then the tree in the at the base of the building. Didn't really damage the left hand side too much. That sort of remained pretty much intact. And a lot of the uh, lower foreground. I'm quite happy with the, the shadow, where that sh the shadow in the bottom left corner um, kept. It's just the right kind of uh, tone there, right kind of value. With cars as well, I find if you put too much detail on the cars, particularly wheels and wheel arches, that can often, you, you lose that fresh look. You want the, um, the, the painting to look quite loose, then just be careful with uh, too much detail on wheels of cars. And also it can make them look a bit too stationary. Uh, you want to try and get a, a little bit of movement, so just giving the impression of a of a few um, wheels. And now I'm putting some, so I got that dustiness, but now I'm applying those dark lines over it again. <laughs> so um, definitely not learning from my own mistakes in the very same painting, uh, right there in the middle, that, that darker line, which I'll have to do something about. So as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, um, that's just the edge there is too, far too hard. And you can see here I'm, I'm dithering and thinking about what to do next, what to try next. So I'm going into uncharted territory. Um, and then this is the start of another mistake, overdoing the white paint. I I very often use white paint, a number of other artists do, uh, at the end of their painting, just to bring back a few little highlights, normally at the end of the painting. But it doesn't work really well. You know, that triangle of light that I wanted at the on the left-hand side of the dome, it just doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't realistically look um, as a sort of bit of light hitting that side of the room. It just looks like a piece of white paint, to be honest. And, and now as I'm going over the tops of the cars, again, just really overdoing it too much. Certainly the, the cars 
in the distance they if i have if i put too much white there it just again gives the impression of um, where i lose that dustiness feeling to it so on the right hand side that van um, distant car so I'm, I'm using paint right out of the tube here with the um, the thin brush and just a, a synthetic round brush good little tip for figures in the shade uh, just a little bit of light on the top of the head and then two bits of light for the shoulders and you instantly can get some you can make some figures out of the shadows so it's not it's not too bad at this stage but i really am now going making things worse by putting a little bit too much white paint by well, it's certainly a lot of white paint and those buildings in the background, I shouldn't put really white paint on those. Perhaps a few little verticals. I can't think of any, I can't think of any painting I've ever given up on. I always pursue it through to the end, right, right or wrong. I know some people, uh, they get frustrated and maybe give up halfway through. But I um, I do like going right to the very end just to make sure um, I withhold judgment till the very end of the painting. Um, Got to be a bit careful with the white on headlights as well on the, the front uh, lights of cars, not overdoing that like that. That yellow taxi on the left hand side, maybe that's just a little bit too big, a bit too bright. Um, it would have to be at some sort of special angle to, to catch that light there. Right, a little bit more on. So this is, as I said before, this is not, this is what not to do. Don't do all of this sort of stuff, this over, over painting with the white paint. And then I don't know why I'm going up the right hand side of that building in the shadows didn't really warrant any white paint there um, what is useful though that diagonal line going down that power line or something that that um, I would agree with that because that that is just above the the dustiness of the street I do add in a bit more darker values. So this white this white paint goes a little bit sort of chalky in the uh, shadows on those two lines there. So some bit more dark on the to the right of the minaret. A 
It's possibly not the easiest scene to do. There, there are lots of detailed buildings that you might get uh, wrapped up in. You think you've got to paint in all those details. So I'm going back to a, a bigger brush now, just trying to lift out and make it a little bit softer. Some of the lines, some of the marks in the sky doesn't doesn't it's not very effective, and it just again it um, is making it look overworked and muddy. If anyone thinks it looks like a, a sandstorm coming in from the outskirts of Alexandria, <laughs> then possibly it might work. Um, I, on this one, I remain unconvinced and that's why I've got to do it again. So the following day, Always a good idea to maybe wait 24 hours. So you've got to get a fresh perspective on things and you've done a little bit of a, a debrief or maybe shared your painting with, with friends or your community, whatever, if you're in a club or Facebook group. It's always a good idea to run it past other people. But in my in my own my own little debrief, the big the big problem I made was when I went in with the flat brush and the white paint, and then it just really started going, getting a bit overworked from that um, from that point onwards. And when I so I wanted to try and do it again, but learn from the mistakes of the last one. And I'm doing the same, the exact same scene again, but I like to add in a few more. Um, variation so perhaps I'll have the cars in a different configuration um, different um, have the have some figures brighter figures on the left hand side but definitely try and not overwork the the right hand side so I'm getting in the minarets the skyline the outline of the buildings building on the right hand side comes down up over to the right hand side keep that fairly simple So now the taxes again, starting from the left, simple windscreen, body of the car. Just thinking about the angles of the windscreen, just to have them slightly different because it, it is coming, <coughs> excuse me, it is coming towards us. Uh, some very basic uh, wheels. Insert a few cars between the major ones so I still have about four or five key key vehicles um, to the front have another bigger taxi here I'm careful not to have anything dominant in the middle that is another mistake that I've done having maybe a, a, a your, your main focal point right in the middle of the scene is a bit of a no-no and I, I try to consciously think about keeping things away from that very central spot of the of the painting now that the van this time I'm going to make it not as narrow at all as the one I did before but just have it behind a yellow taxi. I'll still have a taxi on the right hand side. So we've got uh, lots of different cars and vehicles, almost 
like figures, tops of the figures all in line, tops of the cars almost all in line as well. But then they'll all have varying um, depths depending on how close they are to us. So that looks all right as a group of cars. And then as I did before, a few lines, always useful in a street scene, leading the eye into the composition. Now on the left hand side, my first figure, and we'll have this one in the light. Imagine a little bit of light catching this one and I'll do a bit of cross hatching to indicate the face and that figure's walking towards us. And then a few more. There we are, three, three figures. As I did before, main building on the left, just a few bold lines to indicate the different levels of the building and just helping, as I'm going up the left hand side, just helping with the perspective a bit. Now I'm going over this, some of these key objects again, just to make sure I can, I'll be able to see them through, through a, the wash layer. Don't want to obliterate them. Don't want to go over the wash and not be able to see some of the key objects. There's the left-hand minaret, the right-hand minaret, the dome in the middle. Keep things fairly simple. One danger of doing the scene, doing the same scene again, is that you can be looking at your reference, your, your source, whether it be a photograph or the scene in front of you, but I, I guess it would be on most occasions a photograph, is that you pick up on too much detail and that if you are trying to paint in a loose way, that then goes against it and you, you, you end up um, maybe being in a worse situation by going, going too detailed. So uh, I deliberately try to um, keep things nice and simple and just, the, just drawing in the main objects that I see. So drawing done, happy with the drawing. And then second stage, second painting, as I did before, as I normally do, just going in with the first wash to cover all of the paper, except those areas I want to keep highlighted, like that part of the dome, the, the figure on the left-hand side, um, maybe one or two of the windscreens of the cars. I'm just dampening the side of the dome here because I want a soft edge. So I've just gone in with some clear water and by the time I come down to the dome that will be still quite damp and I'll get a hopefully a soft edge to that. As I did before, uh, a yellow ochre over the lower part of the sky, coming over the buildings, and then above that, going with the bit of cerulean blue, bit of cobalt blue. I sometimes actually mix a sort of 50-50 mix of cerulean cobalt blue for the sky, works quite well for me. And Light coming from the same direction, don't change things too much, but I'm keeping the light from the left hand side. So a bit, the sky is going to be a bit darker in the top right corner. 
And you can just see it the, the, with the slope of my board, the paint's coming down just a little bit. And I can go into the, while everything's still damp, I can go into the top right corner there um, and add in a bit more of an intense blue as long as the, the actual paint is a bit thicker. So down to the buildings now, carefully paint around the dome. Go a little bit cooler down towards the tops of the cars. And I went over that little triangular bit again, so I'm just lift, lifting out with a paper towel there. You see, I, I can make the same mistake twice, but I, I hopefully I rescued it just in time. You can. Uh, it's a lot easier to lift out watercolour paint when it's still quite damp, when you've just applied it. Um, and you can almost really get back to white paper again. It's actually uh, quite straightforward. Now down to, on the left hand side, down to the figures. Careful bit of painting around my main left figure. Put in some shadows for the that light figure as well. So so straight away we're beginning to see that figure quite bright. Bit of light hitting the head, light hitting the sh the, the two shoulders. Now down to the road again. Painting over the cars, I'll go with a bit of yellow in a minute. As I did before, it's more of a a brownie, a brownie, what would I describe it as a brownie grey. Um, so just uh, keep going over to the left hand side. Do some brush marks in different directions there, just to help, to, just to make it a little bit easier to get in a different texture of that surface. And you can see straight away, it is going to go lighter, but you can perceive a little bit of um, difference in the texture in there. So yellow, my lemon yellow, which has been contaminated with a little bit of cadmium yellow, I think. Um, but so it's quite a bright yellow. Uh, going in now with these yellow taxes all over, um, including what I think look, looks quite nice is to imagine with the bright light, the yellow sort of... Uh, is reflected in objects around it so so the the road surface just might give it an extra dimension the painting now I will while the foreground is quite still quite damp I can go in with the Thin brush again. I've just speeded up the video just to show you this. So the foreground is still damp and I'm just going to go in with a small brush, clear water and it just 
parts the um, paint a little bit, you get a slightly darker edge either side to that light white line. It, it's just it's just like parting parting the uh, like parting the oceans. It's just sort of um, creating that nice nice effect. Great for doing pathways in a country field or <laughs> these lines, um, tram lines or whatever um, in the road. Quite effective. Another, another couple on the right hand side. They don't need to be they don't need to be too perfect. In fact they're they're too perfect. It doesn't look um, as good as being imperfect, if you see what I mean. Uh, some some imperfections there it does does actually help quite a lot. Get another one there as well. So that's the initial wash done. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit and fast forward I would have got my hairdryer out just to speed things up you can see it's actually gone a good bit lighter the yellows aren't as bright as they were on the cars sky's gone lighter foreground's gone lighter now I'm going to be doing the start with the, the background I did the minarets um, first of all before I did the background buildings. I'm doing it slightly differently this time. So I'm going to start with the background. Even though they are a little bit darker than some of the, the parts of the mosque. But keep it really simple. Not to, not, no detail at all in the background buildings. Small, small mop brush this time. Most of the moss I'm going to predominantly use yellow ochre and uh, base the moss there. It is going to dry lighter. Make sure I don't go over that triangle that I carefully lifted off. So I have um, damp on the left hand side of that dome again. Did it once on the initial wash, done it, done it again now. But just to give a little bit of um, a softness. So I want, I want to keep the dome light on the, on the left hand side. And I don't want to use white paint to create that light. So if it's gone, if it's gone too dark, Lift off with a small brush that's been dampened with clear water. Um, not too wet. It's important that the brush is sucking up the moisture rather than moisture being released into the paper. A few horizontal lines again as I'm coming down to the tops of the cars. This brush, the, the um, squirrel mop brush, has got a good edge to it, so it's quite good for doing the tops of minarets. Now I'm keeping, as I did before, I thought it was quite nice with these tall objects. Start quite dark and then go a little bit lighter as I come down. So I've got the, the emphasis of the contrast against the bright sky. And then as I come down, being, I want, it, I want it to contrast with darker buildings behind. So go a little bit lighter 
on the in the sort of middle part of the minaret and then I'm going to go a bit darker again as we come down to the tops of the cars. The right hand minaret trying to keep that similar to the left hand one. And also having the, the dome right in the middle, I think works quite well. I just continue on over to the right, but as I come down towards the tops of the cars, I go a bit cooler with a bit of cobalt blue or any blue would, would do. So these are the tops of the cars now and I've just I'm connecting those with the the buildings in the background paint around some of the tops of the cars just following the outline of the pencil drawing coming up against the the van now paint around that one Don't want to I don't want to resort to too much white paint on this one. Top of the van and then there's a building on the right hand side, its rooftop is catching the light. This extreme right building, really simple, nothing much to it at all. So, Ultra in Brew, Aladdin Crimson. That's a pretty classic trio of paints there Burnt Sienna, Ultra in Blue. Arrows and crimson together creates a nice, a nice dark, interesting colour without resorting to neutral tint or Payne's grey or something like that. Gives quite a nice, quite a nice pleasing tone. Use the fingertips again just to make a bit of a softer edge. So I just need to get in the background building around the dome, at the back of the mosque, and the right hand tall apartment block to the right of the mosque, get that in. As I did before, left hand building, dark at the top, come down fairly, fairly light in the middle and then go a little bit darker towards the base. So I'll just add a bit more water here as I come down. It doesn't matter, it's, it's sort of really blending in with the um, background buildings, doesn't matter too much. I can um, rectify that with some darker detail lines later on. Have a few verticals as I did before. So 
become a bit darker towards street level. And that's going to create a lot of contrast with the figure. I think it's going to work quite well with that figure. Just going around that with the darker, darker value. I was happy with the shadows in the first painting um, before I got into those big mistakes. Uh, so this time I'm gonna, gonna have the same way of doing these shadows. Not too much water on the brush and it will go into a few dry brush marks towards the edge of that shadow area. There we are, dry, dry brush and just nothing too careful. Pull out the um, the paint from left to right, and any little any little sort of light areas that are shown there, they, they they could be little bits of rubble or stones catching the light. Right back into the bottom of the building. Paint around the figures. This is why you need a good or a brush with a good point to it. That's the shadow I've just done for that figure. Well, this, no, this, this is the shadow now. That's the shadow for the figure. Connect up with the smaller figures just further back there. And then we're going up to the edge of the building, down to now the left hand side of the taxi. Just come around that. Sort of got pretty much the same colour here. Um, it's like a, a warmish grey, really. the building I'm just dropping in a little bit of water into that building everything's still still fairly damp and I can be adding in this darker color it's thicker in consistency so I won't get in those areas I won't get any blooms appearing and it would just give me a, a bit of a soft edge to it. So now I need to do the cars and this time I'm not going to be emphasizing the headlight the headlights of the car just keep it a really simple shape now I'm going to add in a bit of yellow to the shadow on the right hand side And a red car behind that one. Keep going over, maybe another sort of yellowish car behind that. Lots of taxis in this one. Coming to the middle now and the uh, one of the, well, this is the largest car here that I'm doing now. Back of the car. Keep it quite moist at the bottom because when I go in with the shadows, I want that to be um, 
blending quite nicely. So I've got the shadows now, thicker, darker mix. There's the wheel, bit of light showing underneath the car. And then to, over to the right hand side. So shadow, shadow, just a tiny bit of a shadow coming over to the right with the light coming from the, the top, top left. And then that red car behind. And then on into the distance. So a bit of shadow under, underneath the chassis and you can see it's just going uphill, traveling uphill, giving a nice soft edge. And then because we've got a slightly bumpy surface to the ground, uh, not, a, not a perfect um, straight edge. And then over to the right. Make sure the shadows are a little bit thinner going into the distance. Now the van, let's get in a sort of bluey gray, so that's a cerulean blue there. Check my edge, go over to the right hand side because the light's coming from the left. I don't need to worry about too much light on the right hand side. Come down. There's that right hand taxi like I did before. Join it with the, connect it with the background building. and some dark shadows. Over to join the taxi. Over to the right, uh, perhaps a few little shadows joining there could be some some objects in front of the van and that and that would just fill up that space a little bit just connecting the two together connecting the van with the right hand taxi looks quite quite bright already, the um, light hitting the dome. I'm going to go with a, a building behind that, that dome and the, and the minarets. It's a few palm trees or distant trees just in front of the mask but not like the first painting i don't want to go too dark or too the edge is too hard so that's that's why it's still fairly damp in there um if if i've gone too hard with the edges i can lift out with a paper towel here just in the nick of time rub the paper and you see we've got a Bit of bit of a feeling of that dust already with um, that use of the paper towel. Right, windscreens can be quite tricky to 
get unless you unless you keep it sort of simple with just a, a dark windscreen there as I've done but I like to have a perhaps here on the you know on the right hand side again the lights coming from the left so as with the first taxi on the left and that and that one on the right just have a bit of darkness to the um, windscreen on the right hand side uh, this one I'll just keep fairly simple a rectangle of darkness for for that one Dark. So, so that's given a bit of edge to the right hand building now, but as I come down, I want to put in the tree. Just a few details on the minarets. Quite, it's quite um, dry my brush now, not too much water on it at all. I'm just really picking up whatever's in the palette. It doesn't need to be. I'm not really concerned with the colour at this stage. It's more the value. It's just dark, a dark uh, colour. Tricky sort of uh, bit of architecture below the dome. So a lot going on there. As I said, you, you, the more you look at the photograph, I'm, I am still now and again looking at the photograph and the danger is you, you spot more detail there, which you don't want too much in the background. So I've got to be fairly careful. Um, and there's three main windows at the front of the mosque So I'll just put in a few darker marks in the foreground now for little bits of um, the rubble as I did in the first painting. That that was that was sort of all right. I was quite happy with that. And some of those lighter, some little bit of lighter marks here. Just um, put a bit of shadow on the right hand side just to perhaps give the impression of some. Bit, bit of rubble or um, stones on the on the road. Got to be careful not to overdo this. It looks like a a, a pebble peach or something like that. Just want to still make it look as if you can drive over it. Right, face there was that was a little bit of cadmium orange and a light red just to get a, a flesh colour. And the two other distant figures I need to um, see, they're too bright, those two distant figures, so I need to tone them down a bit. That's that one, and then um, maybe a blue or something for the other figure. Let's 
cerulean blue. So I've left the shoulders unpainted so it looks like there's a bit of bright light hitting that and the, the tops of their heads. So I don't, don't need to use any unnecessary white paint there. What I'm doing now is just putting a, just a few little marks on that building on the left, just so that we've got the impression of it is a, a structure and there's some different levels to it and some windows and doorways. And that's a bit more dark towards the around the, the tops of those two distant figures. Now, picked up a bit of Viridian green there, just to, um, with, a, with these dry brush marks, create this tree, this sort of smallish tree that, um, well, it's more of a medium-sized tree, um, at the base of the uh, building, and it creates a bit of contrast with the lighter edge to it. Now this windscreen is on the verge of being a little bit muddy with the um, the way I mixed that paint. If I'd have had a bigger brush and more water and a darker a darker mix, that might have worked a bit better. But and also the van might might not be too dry, so you can get this muddy appear. The mud you can the muddy watercolor. Could appear when your paint's a little bit too pasty and you've gone on top of paint that hasn't dried properly um, so maybe a bit better to wait till everything's with that windscreen of the van if i waited to um, wait till the van's completely dry and then go in use a bigger brush than i've got here so size of brush is important to avoid um, overworking use as big a brush as you can for um, larger areas, so so if I had a uh, well that that medium sized mop brush again, that would have been better with hindsight. Now I've got to do these background buildings, so I'm using a bit of lavender here, burnt sienna. It's quite a nice mix, and then just to the left of the left hand minaret so i'm going to come down that but retain a little bit of the light do you see there against the left hand side of the minaret and then join come in and join the top of the building now i can go right up against the right hand edge of the minaret, minaret because the light's coming from the left Being right-handed, I'm hiding the dome here and I've got to be careful when I paint around that to keep it nice and symmetrical. Quite a tricky part of the painting, getting that dome. It's, it's, um, it's got a quite a nice, nice shape to those, the domes there. And down to my little bit of light hitting that triangular, triangular bit of light that I, for a second time, <laughs> for a second time I went over it, but luckily I lifted off the, the paint um, as quickly as I could. Go a bit darker now over to the right hand side of this background building.
and then pick up on the right hand side of the right hand minaret and then I'll continue over to the taller building My brush is fairly dry at this stage, there's not too much water on it at all, so I can apply a little bit of softness in there. Um, don't want to make the same mistake as I did before with too many hard edges in the distance. Okay, this another key building on the right hand side. Keep this simple as well. I overworked it on the first time round. Try not to make the same mistake here. Keep it nice and simple. A um, few little bits jutting out from the outline of the building to they, they're, they're the uh, balconies. So I'll put those in first and then I'll just draw come down vertically and then paint in the middle can be anything really get a bit darker towards the bottom now I've got to of course the buildings I'm coming down to have dried so I've got to blend it a little bit with my fingertips. Mm -hmm. That sort of works, I think. Yep, and uh, just go back up into, those areas are still quite damp, so I can just go back in with a brush just to, um, not make them too monochrome. You can see with the uh, the shine there, it's still quite damp, and I can be moving things around with the finger just a little bit. few windows or levels to this building not too much just not even perfect lines really but as long as I've got the perspective right which I think looks okay So what I'm doing here, just where the um, blooms appeared on the left-hand building, which I quite like that in watercolour. I think um, blooms are very effective in shadows and, <coughs> excuse me, and in, in foliage, in trees or meadows. A lot of a lot of artists um, use that. So a few little shadows now going across the scene, very light shadows. Connecting up different bits of the of the scene.
Now, with the white paint here, I'm just going to create a few more rooftops of distant cars and hopefully I will emphasise the um, appearance here of lots of cars, very busy um, traffic uh, scene. And then uh, perhaps just a tiny bit on for the trim of some of the cars. Learning my lesson from <laughs> learning my lesson from the first painting. I don't want to overdo it with the white paint on the cars. Little bit on the dome, little bit on the mosque. And the top of the top of the mosque. Painting in a few little vertical marks which could be lamp posts or something. If I think they're too detailed I'll just quickly smudge them out with my finger before they've had a chance to dry. I think one here, a bit of lost and found, a light post that's in front of that dark green tree. That, that, that looks all right. No, I need to um, just put a bit more detail on that apartment block, a few windows coming down, um, one here on the left hand side, a little bit in the middle, just, just really a few very simple brush marks, not perfect rectangles by any means, and then a just a few on the right hand side. There, that's that's fine. A um, bit more on the minaret, right and left. A few more dark verticals. Just really um, adding in just a few marks here and there, just to not make everything look too perfect. A bit darker in the top bits of the windows on the front of the mosque. Looks okay. And if they're too dark, just smudge them out. Then these are the power lines, which I must include. I mean, uh, many of the um, scenes around Alexandria got, got all these power lines going across the, uh, from one building to another. So it just makes it a bit more authentic and the, the horizontal one going across. Um, let's put in a, a street lamp here. Light on the left, light on the right.
and some brake lights. See there, they're in the, sh in the shade, these brake lights. I don't want them to be too, the red to be too bright. Now a few dry brush marks just to emphasize some of these time, um, markings in the road. I'm not sure whether they're tire marks as such, but uh, just, just uh, darker lines in the road. Just a few there. Quite light in, quite light in color. A few more dots pile of rubble, little stone, little chippings. So another, another important thing with a painting is knowing when to stop. Maybe I'll feature that in another video, but uh, I've certainly learnt my lesson from the first painting, and I, I did this one a, a day after, um, with some of the mistakes still fresh in my mind. So I knew uh, I was best, better able to make a decision on this one. Let's put a few more little finishing touches to it now. And uh, that's about it, done. So there you are, uh, a couple of paintings in this, in this video. Uh, one where I'm highlighting some obvious mistakes that many beginners might make and I've made a few times and I, I wanted to be up front and share this with you. Um, and a blatant um, overworking of the painting, going in with that nasty white paint uh, with a flat brush, trying to be clever or making a shortcut with, um, with that dusty feeling to it and it went all went horribly wrong and I went over the detail of the cars and then, then I had to go in with darker paint and then the whiter paint, um, a total mess. It might have been, it might have been rescued if I didn't go in too much with the white paint. Like it could have passed as a sort of dusty, a really dusty, gloomy scene. Um, but it, it didn't look too fresh. From a watercolour point of view, it didn't look too fresh. Um, so I did it again. Wait a day, a fresh, a fresh mind, um, a fresh uh, approach to it. Uh, Reevaluate where I went wrong. Think about when I'm going to stop. So I went a bit, quite a bit brighter with the taxes, a brighter condition, but hopefully, just got the, the feeling of a little bit of dust coming up from the road there in the distance, and the feeling of all those cars and the rubble on the surface as well. Um, yeah, so it it still it still looks quite fresh. It's not overworked. It's not too muddy. Although I was I was starting to get a little bit muddy in that um, windscreen of that car, and possibly at the base of this building where I was joining this building here. So this this building here um, had dried already, and then I went in secondly with this building. So I've got this edge to contend with. Well, I, w I went in quite wet there and I, I smudged it with my finger and it sort of worked, but it's verging. It's almost verging on being a little bit too overworked, muddy there, just in, the, in those two areas, if I can be a little bit hypercritical of myself. But everything else I quite like. It's, um, I like these, these blooms and cauliflowers appearing. So thanks for watching. Um, hopefully that was of interest to you. Mistakes to avoid in watercolour painting, 
don't overwork things, don't overcook it, um, avoid the mud, avoid those muddy watercolours and plan your painting and know when to stop. Thanks for watching, catch up with you next time.